Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Arsenal. It's literally the first day of the transfer window and I feel like we've been here talking for the last two months. It's never a boring transfer window with Arsenal and the news just keeps on coming and coming and coming. We will be talking about the latest on Kai Havertz and the latest on Declan Rice. We've had that um, David Onstein bomb, uh, bomb of um, news for about... Um, Kai Havertz and a lot of journalists have picked it up as well and uh, we have more information on how the Havertz deal and also the Rice deal. Very, very interesting. Let's start with um, the latest on Declan Rice. So according to reports on uh, uh, from Sami um, on Declan Rice, Arsenal are focusing on completing their move for Declan Rice, which could cost in excess of 100 million before trying to close a deal for Kai Havertz and want to establish how much money they will be required to pay up front for Rice this summer. West Ham ideally want the money for Rice paid in two installments before 2025. The amount Arsenal pay um, for number one target Rice will impact how far they are willing to stretch for Harvard. So the first point of um, that um, tweet is um, we will go for rice um, first before Harvard. A lot of people have been worried, people asking uh, why are we going for Harvard? We've not finished the rice deal yet. We need to go for rice first and then Caicedo second and then Harvard later. According to that, we will still be going for rice first. We want to finish that deal. Obviously, international games are going on right now. We still haven't agreed the fee with them yet. And also, before he does the medical and everything, um, hopefully it will be done very, very soon though. But uh, yes, we will still be going for rice first before Harvard. I'd be very surprised if Harvard joined Arsenal first before Declan Rice because the Harvard one yet, I still feel like there's going to be a lot of negotiations to um to go through with that one. And also um on that tweet they're talking about installments. Um the we will be paying that in two installments, whatever we pay for Declan Rice. So that will be um that will be very, very interesting. Um that would be very good for our, our business this summer. Like if we can get it um, paid in installments, that would allow us to potentially get other players for this transfer window that we need immediately for next season. As we think about paying the Declan Rice fee um, after that, and uh, in two, like in t until 2025, in two installments, I think that that would be great. I don't know how they're going to break it down. Is it half half, or will they pay 60 million up front and then the rest later? I don't know how they're going to break it down. But installments, whichever way it will work, it will work for us instead of just paying the 100 million um, up front. It will um, definitely help us. I'm not sure if it's going to be definitely 100 million or less than that or more than that. We have to wait and see what um, Arsenal and West Ham agree on. But Declan Rice deal is the one that will be done um, first before um, the Harvard's deal. So Rice first, and then um, we're talking about installments, and then the amount Arsenal pay for the number one target rice will impact on how far they're willing to stretch for harvard so whatever we pay for rice we'll decide how much we will be paying for harvard so let's say for example we end up paying 50, uh, paying 50 million for declan rice then for sure we have enough money to go for harvard's so maybe you can end up giving them something like 65 million but obviously that is just um making making stuff up that is definitely not going to happen you have you're going to have to pay more than 85 million somewhere between 85 million and 110 million somewhere there i think it's going to be less than 100 million but whatever we pay for him is going to determine or whatever we pay in the first installment for rice is going to determine what we pay for harvard's speaking of harvard's um chelsea want a minimum of 70 million for kai harvard's arsenal are, are hopeful they can strike a deal closer to 60 million um pounds inclusive of add-ons and are willing to pay harvard's in excess of 200 000 per week the player is keen to move across london if both clubs can uh, reach an agreement over a fee so chelsea won 70 million for harvard's if you give them that 70 million right now they'll give you the player but as many of us have agreed 70 million seems, seems like a, a too much um to pay for harvard's considering he's not really been on top form at all um with Chelsea Chelsea themselves have been not uh, not so not been in great form at all and um just the value I don't think it's valid anywhere near 70 million maybe two three years ago before he joined Chelsea for sure is around that money maybe even more but as of now you have to be realistic uh, for example you cannot say holding 30 million no you have to be realistic with how your players have performed and their market value and everything and how about being 70 million that that just sounds like Chelsea want to get back the money they paid for him. And it would be impossible to get um, 70 million for Harvard. I don't think any team will pay that. Real Madrid themselves are refusing to pay 50 million for Harvard. So uh, they want an extra 25 million, 20 million on top of that. I don't think so. Um, so the only other way, it's either three things that we end up paying that 70 million, which I don't think is going to happen at all. 
uh, or maybe we pay that 60 million and we actually pay that 60 million and they will give us the player. Maybe they will accept to give us the player or maybe even lower than that, lower than that in Chelsea will have to accept. But uh, I think it's going to be around 50, 60 million there for us to get him. And also another interesting point in terms of that is 200,000 per week. We've just given um, Saka a, a lot of uh, money in terms of wages. Saliba is also going to be given 200K and British sure Jesus is like 330K or something. Part is on a lot of money as well. I think we're going to sell Pepe, but he's also on like 140 something. He's on a lot of money too. So maybe this is why we're trying to get rid of players like Pepe, 145K, I think. I think TN is on 110K. So if you get rid of all these players, you're kind of... um cooling down the 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 wage um, structure and how much you're paying these players because Harvard's rice especially if both of them join you're paying a lot of money i'm assuming rice will be paid like because declan rice was offered like more the way more than two hundred thousand a week by west i mean he refused so are we actually going to pay him like three hundred thousand a week Harvard's 200k saliba 200k saka like 200k or more than that there's been talks of 300k Odegaard is about to extend his contract as well. Odegaard is being paid like 115k or something. That's too little. He was our best player. So even him, it's going to go up as well. So I'm not very keen. I'm not very happy about players being paid too much money uh, per week because uh, we, we were past that. But um, if the player deserves it, then um, well and good. Because I'm assuming, man, I don't know exactly how much every single Man City player is paid, but I think all of them are like on high uh, wages, like especially Haaland and De Bruyne and those kind of players. Mares. So let's see what happens but himself as well is on high uh, high wages so is that another reason why you could be looking to get rid of thomas party just to clear the wage and um, wage bill in terms of um how much money you're paying this players tne party and also pepe especially the three of them on way more than 100k per week let's see what happens with that but um harvard will be paid around 200k now if is if we're going to pay that kind of money for him and pay him that much money per week then they are very serious about him. Whatever he's seen uh, with Harvard, we've not seen. Because um, if it was something like 45 million and you're paying him 120, 30k a week, they'll be like, yeah, I understand. But basically, we're breaking the bank for him, 200k a week, and also almost 70 million, 60 million plus add-ons for Harvard. Then I really, really wants the plan. It will be very interesting to see how he fits in because. Um, there's been divided opinions. Some people want him to uh, to cut to um, join us. So some people are like, no, we're not having it. There's a lot of better players out there. Some other people are like, we don't even need uh, that kind of player. Already have what they get. Already have Smith. Already have Fabio Vera. But if he's going to pay that kind of money for him, then uh, it seems like he really, really wants him. So you have to wait and see how this one develops. So negotiation negotiations for Rice going on, um, and also um, have us uh, negotiations going on. If we pay all that, let's say one hundred million and the seventy million for Harvard, that's one hundred and seventy million for those two players. So do we still have enough money to also go for Kaiser and players like Cancelo and Castani? I still feel we're going to see at least four new faces in the team. Whether one of them is going to be on a loan deal or one of them is going to be a, like a cheap deal, I don't know. But I think we're going to see at least four faces. And um, we are going to see a lot of players um, leaving the team as well. I've done a video about 10 players who are going to leave um, Arsenal. The link will be in the description and I also link it um, up there as well. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Let's see how this one develops. Let me know what you think about Harvest joining us, soon, especially for those kind of figures, 200k a week and 60 million plus add-ons in terms of transfer fee. And uh, don't worry about Declan Rice. We are going for him first. Um, so that is also um, something to keep an eye on. The other thing is what happens to Smith and Fabio Vieira because if you're going to get Harvard and um, Odegaard is also there. Yes, I know we have a lot of games to play and all that, but... Um, what happens to the game time for Smith and Fabio Vera? Smith has just been picked for the under 21 England team. I, I he really, really needs that game time. Hopefully, he starts a few games for them during this summer and he can um, get back to speed because a sharp Smith, remember, is a guy who can score double figures for us in the Premier League season. Imagine. Uh, we, Jesus scored more than 10 goals last season. Odegaard, Martinelli, Saka, all of them scored more than 10 goals last season. Imagine he can add the Smith Rowe from two seasons ago. He can also add 10 of his goals. And then you bring Havertz and he also adds 10. Uh, even some people say his record is like eight or nine goals. Even if he adds that to the team, you're way past 100 goals. You don't even really need a 30 goal um, striker. If you get that, hey, he'll be competing for all four trophies. I'm not complaining. But um, let's see how both of these ones develop. Tomorrow will be live early in the morning. There, there will be, um, or will be live um when is when is that day? It's Thursday, Thursday morning. Um, to react to the Premier League fixtures, who are we going to get first? 
Tottenham at home, my United away. Are we going to get Luton away as they always give us these newly promoted teams away from home? Is it going to be Brentford at home? Let us wait and see. I took a screenshot and I ended up on um, Bournemouth at home. Let's see how that one um, works out. Thank you for watching. I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow.